Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. A subscriber asked a question, Mr. Magazine. Okay. What do you do if you have an item that will sell well if it's graded, but you don't have the time or the money to get it graded? Hmm. <laughs> well, I guess if you don't have the time or the money... Well, I guess that, that, yeah, that I mean, you, limits you, you your options. You can't grade it, but I guess you don't want to give it away either when you sell. You know, so you go to sell it online. Say, you know, say it's a Spider-Man number five, high grade, which obviously is going to go for a lot more money. Or better yet, Strange Tales one ten, which is worth how much? A couple hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. In in very very poor condition. The point is. You'd have to market it on eBay and do a really good listing and put a high price on it and let someone else do the grading and spend the time and the money. Well, and uh, really, really uh, high definition scans. Yeah. Everything you possibly can, you've got to see this. I guess part of the problem though you would run into just using that would be you're going to have some level of people who are going to be afraid to buy it. Right. Because they're going to look at it and go, this book looks great. Yeah. Why is he not getting it graded? Yeah. Uh, when you get down to it, so you're going to have to have a, a discount off of what you should be able to get right. for it. Now, is it a card or a comic? We don't uh, know. It's whatever. Yeah. I mean, I guess there is another option, and depending on what it's worth. And if it's worth a hundred bucks, and you know, then you just have to sell it, get the most you can out of it, do a great listing. But if it's worth a thousand or five or ten thousand, I guess the best option with no money up front was to consign it to like a heritage auction house. I guess that's the way to do it, because then they'll grade it. It comes out of your, your fees, but then, you know, say it's worth $4,000 raw, but if you get a 9.5, it's worth 25000 or whatever, 9.4, you know. So then let them deal with it, give it to them. They'll submit, you might get, you know, it might take you a while to get your money back. It might be a six month process, but again, you're putting no money up front, and at some point you'll get a nice fat check. Well, another option would be to sell it locally to somebody who does have the time and the right. money sure. to, uh, to do the right thing with it because they can see it in person even if it's yes. a comic dealer or a local collector dealer they can see it in person and say hey yeah this is legit not you won't get scammed you know hopefully you're dealing with someone that everyone knows but uh yeah because you never know online what could happen so someone could swap it out or something like that and then you're out yeah and i certainly wouldn't set, put it up like on a facebook or something like that because who knows who might show up and they might just take it from you yeah. whereas if you go like we'll just use a comic book as an example if you go over to a a comic book show you've got it in your hand you're letting everybody see it all the dealers right. see it yeah. um and if it's a if it's something beyond your you know your little local show with seven dealers you're going to potentially have the dealers there who a have the interest and b also have the money to True. be able to buy it yeah. too you know say it is a ten thousand dollar book if you got one of the big wigs in for one of the big spenders in from new york city he might be able to give you eighty five hundred dollars right. for it or they'll, something like that a higher percentage yeah because they're going to get a premium over there, or they'll have a discount for consignment of heritage or something. So, yeah, uh, they'll have it figured out. And, and it kind of was an interesting question, and I wanted to talk about it a little bit because um, as I head into the twilight of my state career, uh, I'm going to be going into my collectibles room. Mm. And you and I have had this conversation recently about it's almost like you front a little bit of money to get stuff graded, and say I've got two copies of Conan number one ungraded. Mm -hmm. I get them both graded, I keep the better one, I sell the lesser one to pay for the grading on both of them and also front the money to grade two more books. Right. Then I send those two books in yeah. and I keep the better one, sell the lesser one to get the money to get four books graded and so on and so on. <laughs> and then when you, when you really stop and sit back and look at it that way, yeah. you're spending it's a lot process. of money on, well, you're also spending a lot yeah. of money on grading. It's oh, like, yeah. you look at it and you're like, wait a minute, I gave away an entire Conan run to get a Conan run graded <laughs> for Right. That's what I'm doing with my Spider-Mans, believe it or not. I think I'm up to the first 200 are graded. But again, I'm getting upgrades. But you get a little smarter as they get newer. Mine are a lot high, higher grade. But mine could be 9, 9, 2s, 9, 4s, where for 100 bucks I can get a 9, 8 sometimes. So I may just want to do that and save myself the trouble. And then I can sell the raw one for 20 bucks maybe or whatever. So, you know, but uh, it's fun, though. I like it. Um, but uh, grading can be expensive. I usually send in 100 at a time. In between the pressing and cleaning 
in grading and shipping, it could be 40, 50 bucks. You know, I'm looking at four or five grand every time. So it, it certainly does add up. But again, I could have five books and they're equal that. So it's worth doing it for me. Right, right. No, it's, um, it's quite the process. And it's going to be very, very interesting when I get into the, uh, into the collectibles room because again a lot of that stuff hasn't seen the light of day for you know 15 20 years and i know i've got some keys in there that i picked up 15 20 years ago yeah, the golden age batman's single digits yep now i think those were with okay. my strange I'm, tales I'm gonna, one, I'm gonna help you find those i think they're with my strange tales 110 if i remember I'll right buy a 9-8 and trade it. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so it's uh that, that was a good question and Again, I think local probably would be the best way to deal yeah. with that over there. Uh, especially Easiest, safest, yeah, I agree. The only problem I can see with that is uh, we, we always have a bias um, because we're in a city. You know, I mean, we're in Rochester, which is not the biggest city in the world, obviously, but it does have a, a decent enough comic show that draws enough dealers around. And if we really wanted to, it's only, what, a six, seven hour drive down to Big Apple Con. We could go to that. You could go to, yeah. you know, within six hours of where we live at, there are multiple big cities yeah. that you Toronto definitely could sell. Them, yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, I'm sure there's some big comic dealers over Cleveland, over wherever, uh, within six hour drive. What happens if you live in Podunk, Montana? Then you're either, either driving a <laughs> long distance or you're consigning to heritage. So, and, and no disrespect to Podunk, Montana. Um, I know we're one of the bigger bigger uh, channels over there. We mm -hmm. definitely do appreciate all of the support. Um, yeah, so we I, I, we do thank you all for asking the questions. We will try to bring them up. I've got a pile of other questions that we we'll are bringing up in futures. But I, I wanted to uh, bring it up for Mr. Magazine just kind of to see what, what he would say about that. Because, again, if you go way back to some of our earliest, earliest videos, uh, Mr. Magazine was actually really down on grading back then. And he has definitely changed uh, his views on it throughout the years. I guess one last quick thing. What should, we'll just deal with comics because that's what you know, or cards. What should you get graded? Well, I always tell everyone that asks me, like, I want to get these graded. What do you think? I always tell them, get your three, four, fifth best ones you think are the best condition possible. Cards, comics, whatever. Send them in. And then you're going to know what the rest are going to get graded. Because you don't want to send in 50 items and think they're all going to be 8s for cards and they're going to be 6s or 9s or 10s are going to be 8s. So I, said, I always say, send your best ones in, just a handful. Don't, you're not investing a lot of money. And then you see, are you happy with them? Are you not happy with them? Do you think they graded them you know, to what you thought they would be? And they're sold anyway. No, the rest. nobody ever does. <laughs> I always say, downgrade yourself one. Whatever you think it's going to be, at least for cards especially. If you think it's going to be a 9, it's probably going to be a 7 or an 8. And it's just the way it is. Um, but, yeah, that's what I would suggest to anyone. Well, I, I was thinking more what what types of items or what uh, values should be graded. I, I understand that if you've got something that's super high grade, and even yeah. then if you've got something super high grade, you shouldn't necessarily get it graded. Um, because it may not be worth it. I may have, sure. I may have the most beautiful conditioned independent comic, black and white comic from uh, you know 1994 or 1984. Yeah. But if it has zero collector interest, right. yeah, great. I got a nine eight on a comic yeah. that nobody wants. Um, yeah, I guess it depends on if you're reselling it or if you're collecting the item you're getting graded. Because for me, when I first started grading. The rule of thumb was like 100 bucks or more. So when it okay. comes back, it's 100 bucks or more. You know, the problem is you got 50 bucks into the grading, and it's a little high, probably 40, 45 into whatever. But the point is, if you know, if you get everything graded that's ten dollars, and you can get it, buy it on eBay cheaper in the same grade, then you're wasting your time with the shipping and all that shit. So you know, if you're going to resell it, you want to make sure, hey, I got ten dollars into this comic, 40 into the grading. It's worth 120. Well, then you're gonna make you know 50, 70 bucks less the fees or whatever. So it's worth it. But you know if you're collecting it, you got to be a little smarter because again, you don't want to grade something that you're paying 50 dollars for it and it comes back in eight, which is worth 50 bucks. You know, or the raw price sometimes could be the same as an eight. So you, you got to do a little more uh, studying when it comes to your collection. In my opinion, that's what I do. But again, if you you know if a, a key or a grail. It's 500 or 1,000, you know, definitely it's worth grading all day long. I was just going to say, if you have a Hulk 181, yeah, get it graded. If you have a Spider-Man number one, get it graded. If you have an Action Comics number one, 
Solid to me. Uh, <laughs> in get any it graded. condition, really. Even yeah, if it's any a low, condition. Even if it's some a of that one. Stuff. Yeah, yes. definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Amazing Fantasy 15 and 1 0 is still worth getting graded. Yeah. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Hopefully that answered the question. Uh, do hit the like uh, button. We can all agree that that's a great thing to do. And we will see you next video. Take care. Bye bye.